Hey everybody, I'm Spencer. I am CTO and president of Averon Software, and I wanted to walk you through how to connect C Sharp with Azure OpenAI. We're gonna go through the most basic steps, basically how do you install the NuGet package in your .NET solution, how do you create the resource in Azure OpenAI, and how do you actually complete a chat completion, which is the API we're gonna focus on today. When most people think of ChatGPT, they're thinking of the back and forth that you can, uh, how do you write to console in C Sharp. They think of the back and forth uh, that you can have with an AI, where it'll give you some code or it'll answer your question. And uh, you can kind of go back and forth, ask it questions, and it will respond. The chat completion API pretty much behaves exactly the same way. The difference is, is that instead of having one continuous stream, you just continue to send the entire chat history back to the API. API for processing. So let me show you what that looks like. Uh, first thing we're going to do, uh, we're going to go to Azure and uh, we're going to go to create a resource. And you're going to see here that under Azure Open AI, that they have a Azure Open AI right here. Click create. And uh, you're going to see that you'll assign it a resource group, a name. Uh, the region that you put it in actually does matter depending on the model that you're looking for. Uh, and I'll put a link to this documentation below. Um, but certain models, like the newer 806, August 6th model uh, that was made available for GPT-40, you can see it's not available in all data centers. So make sure you check this chart. I, I recommend you use 806 model for today. This is October 27th, 2024. Video will be updated in the future because this stuff changes all the time. And as you can see here, the pricing for 806 is much cheaper than the previous deployment, which is from May. Uh, so anyways, we'll go back here. You'll assign a resource group. You'll give it a name and uh, you'll give it a pricing tier here. And the pricing tier is always standard SO. And uh, you go through the creation steps. I already have one created, which I will go ahead and open up. So you're going to get a screen that looks something like this. So the important things that you'll need to note for this are the keys and endpoint. So you can see here that we have uh, key one, uh, which these will be just this resource will be destroyed by the time this video is. So uh, please try the API key. Let me know if it works for you. That was a bad thing. Uh, so we've got key here and we've got the uh, endpoint here. So we're going to go ahead, let the UI note that down. And then model deployments. That's the other pretty critical thing. So once you click on that, I'll we'll close this one. We end up on the deployments tab. So we're going to go to deploy base model and we're gonna to go to GPT-4.0, hit confirm. Uh, and you're gonna have a couple of options here. So global standards gonna be fine for most people using Azure OpenAI. If you have data residency requirements, uh, you might go to standard, which is uh, slightly more expensive, as you can see, if you're using what would be the regional uh, API versus the global. Uh, but most people are gonna be fine with global standard. And we're gonna to go to customize, and I'm particularly clicking on that because uh, I want to point out that today, October 27th, 2024, the newer version of the model, the cheaper version of the model is not the one that's pre-selected. So we're going to go ahead and select that. We're going to go ahead and change the deployment name to Averon Test GPT-4.0. Tokens per minute rate limit uh, would simply be the number of tokens that you can use this uh, particular deployment for. So you might have much less for a test and uh, much higher for prod, for instance. So we'll keep it there and content filters fine. So we're going to click deploy and you're going to see that in just a second, it will be deployed. Here we go. There we go. So we're going to click here and you're going to see that right here. So we've got our 806 GPT-40. So far, so good. So now let's connect it to our C Sharp project. So now that everything is deployed, we're gonna go and flip back to our .NET project. This is JetBrains Writer, by the way, the best .NET IDE in the world, recently made free for personal use, which is amazing. And we're gonna just right click on our project and click Manage NuGet Packages. And we are going to type in azure.openai.openai. And you can see that we have the official uh, version. Occasionally, I do want to note that this is the latest version that is not pre-release. Occasionally, uh, a pre-release will be uh, required if they're they're rolling out new features all the time. Azure OpenAI tends to lag behind OpenAI and doesn't tend to, it does. Uh, so usually the features are one to three months, usually about a lead time before they get to o Azure OpenAI. So sometimes it's useful as they're putting those features in to uh, get the pre-release packages. We're going to stick with this one, though, because we're just doing chat completions. So I'm going to add that, hit install. And then I am going to go ahead and put the three pieces of information we need to create a chat completion. I'm going to put that into variables right now. 
First things first, we're gonna go get the deployment name. We're gonna get that from right here. We're gonna copy that string. And there we go, we got the deployment name. Next, we're gonna get the endpoint URL, endpoint URL. And we're gonna go here back to the main Azure portal and you're gonna see that under keys and endpoint here, we've got our endpoint and we've got our key. So I'm gonna get our endpoint here, boom. And then var key, we'll go ahead and copy this key right there. Take that in, boom. Okay, perfect. Next thing we're gonna do is create the Azure OpenAI client. So we're going to say var client equals new Azure OpenAI client. Uh, in some IDs like Visual Studio Code, uh, might not show this right away. You'll want to, uh, once I hit tab up here, it'll add the using statement. You might have to add azure.ai.openai as a using statement. We're just gonna let the IDE do the work in this case. So we're gonna go Azure OpenAI. We're going to say new URI, endpoint URL. And then we are going to say new API key credential. You're gonna see that there are uh, a few function signatures to this. You can see that the most basic one takes in the endpoint and the API key credential, which is all we need for this particular thing. And we're gonna give it the key. And that's good, good so far. Go ahead and minimize that. And then next we're going to create our chat client. And then client get chat client. And this is where you'll give it, you'll see there that's the model, the deployment name. So deployment name, boom. There it is. And now we're pretty much ready to go. Uh, we're gonna take a look at the API for chat client. We're gonna say complete chat async. Uh, so we do have a, uh, a streaming API that we can use, but we're just gonna do the uh, straight one, which is just consuming it and just waiting for the full response from the server. And you can see that it takes in an I enumerable of chat messages, uh, some options that we're gonna ignore for now, cancellation token in case you wanna be able to cancel it. Perhaps it's a uh, bound to an HTTP request and you just want it to stop if, uh, if they cancel the HTTP request, something along those lines, right? But we're gonna just stick with this one right here. So we're actually going to messages equals new list of chat message, tab to import that. You see that it gets added to our using statement here. And we are going to say, while true, we're going to say var line equals console dot read line. This will take a string of characters, whatever we type in. And once we hit enter, it will move on to the next thing. Go ahead and put a message right here as well. Console dot write line. Say something to Azure Open AI, please. So we're gonna say console.readline and we're gonna go ahead and break out of this loop if the line is equal to exit, if line equals exit, break. We'll get out of that loop. We'll go ahead and uh, add something to our messages, send it off to OpenAI, wait for the response, and then just kind of have a continuous chat going. So you're gonna see that uh, it takes in a chat message. You cannot actually construct chat message directly. I'll go ahead and show you the source code for that. The one that we would go for would be this one right here, uh, and you can see that it's marked as internal, so we can't see it, but we do have access to user chat message, which we are going to use. We're gonna go ahead and open that up, and we're gonna see that it takes in some content, so I'm gonna go ahead and give it our line that we created, and then I am going to do the magic to actually call the API. So we're gonna say chat client dot complete chat async. We're gonna say var response equals chat client to complete chat async. We're gonna go down here. We're gonna look at the signature of this method and see that, yep, we get in our uh, I enumerable of chat message. So we're gonna say messages. And then at this point we have our response. So now we just need to take it and add it to our messages array and also print it to the console. And then we're gonna get the chat response here. We're gonna say response.value.content.last text, get that out of there like that. We'll write it to the console, chat response. And then we'll go ahead and add it back to our array so that the API can continue to receive the full context of the back and forth uh, that we're having with this chatbot. So we will go messages.add new 
assistant chat message, and we're going to do an assistant chat message because the assistant is the AI responding to us. So chat response. And we're going to run it and see what happens. So say something to hope Azure OpenAI. I'm going to say hi. Well, it's going to be very polite and say, how can I assist you today? My name is Spencer. Who are you? I'm an AI designed to help with your questions. So, and just to see that the response does go back. What did I say my name was? I mentioned your name is Spencer. So just to show you that the uh, entire array of messages goes back and forth with this. And if we, of course, go back up to our running program and we say exit, that's when we'll get out of the thing and go back here. I do want to point out just a couple more things. One thing that's really neat is that you will be able to monitor uh, under metrics here, under your deployment inside of Azure OpenAI Studio, uh, you'll be able to see the usage. So you can see our usage, our, our count was rather low because of course we really didn't say much. So this is just a very basic demonstration. Uh, lots of people will be perfectly happy doing this and just stopping, but it does get better. In a future video, I will cover Semantic Kernel, which is a Microsoft's abstraction framework over LLMs and uh, OpenAI as well. That gives you a lot more functionality and is kind of a library used to model how LLMs and OpenAI are used in the real world. I'm very excited about that video in particular because it's the one that I use in my consulting practice a ton. Keep an eye out for that. I have links to all of the things that I showed you in this video, to this, including the code uh, in the description below. And I hope this is very helpful. Please leave comments.